Hello, and welcome to Answer Everywhere. We're taking a look at the source code for SurrealDB. On this show, we read source code. And uh, SurrealDB is a database. I think it's a Rust database. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately for us, it is this uh, business license. What's it called? The business source license. So this is the last of these business source license repos I'm going to do on this show. They're not technically open source, and I want to focus on open source stuff. And uh, that's, that's how it is, man. This is how it is. Uh, so this is a database that bills itself as a, um, like a multimodal database or a multi, uh, what's the word? What do they call it? Um, it can handle like graph data, it probably can handle document data similar to a NoSQL da database multi-model. Um, I don't know how it works under the hood. I think that these days, um, most people are switching to a SQL-like model. Uh, I think Postgres is kind of heading in that direction. There is for a while this trend toward uh, NoSQL, and I think that NoSQL has essentially been uh, incorporated in, into the SQL-style database that give you ACID guarantees. And so that's the trend. And for for we've looked at some graph databases before. We looked at Neo4j. We looked at uh, a couple of others. I'll throw them in the uh, the show notes. And uh, the the trend there is that oftentimes it's easier to just use a traditional database like Postgres instead of a specialized graph database. Postgres, for example, can handle a lot of the uh, graph workflows. Not all of them, but um, enough where if you need to move to a, a graph database, typically that that's something that you can wait until you have known problems. And so I'm guessing that that's more or less the sort of thing that SurrealDB is doing as well. It describes itself as, it describes itself as a scalable, distributed, collaborative document graph database for the real-time web. Um, so we have SQL and NoSQL and database as a service. I think the fact, I think that uh, since they're targeting database as a service, that's why they have this non-open source license. And so let's uh, plow in. We'll start the uh, 30 minute timer just to give us a sense of, of uh, how quickly we're moving along. And this is Rust. So I don't really know Rust. I've never met Rust before, or I met him once. No, just kidding. All right, hello. Hello, no good nicks. That's kind of a funny name. Where did my uh, pop out chat go? Here we are. Hello. Okay, we're gonna keep this off. Well, are we? Keep it over here for now. Okay, so with limited time, I'm guessing image is not important. Probably lib and package and source. I don't know what the Rust convention is, but most likely the real code is going to be in one of these. Lib might be third-party stuff. So we have fuzz. Fuzzing is good. Examples and benches are good. And then we have source. And we have API. So we have something like uh, connections, opt, method, headers, errors, and engine. I don't know if this is the database engine. Mod, I guess, is Rust module stuff. Let's see if we can find um, anything interesting in Engine. Native. Uh, so this is some WebAssembly stuff. I, I don't think that's going to be where I want to be. Package has Deb and Nix. This will be Unix. Uh, not Unix, but the Nix package manager. Deb will be Debian packaging. And that leaves us with source. And in source, we have cli, kunf. I think kunf is probably config. We'll open it quickly just to see. DBS, maybe database service, Mac, probably for like your favorite Mac and cheese recipes, or maybe Mac OS stuff. Mem is probably going to be memory stuff. RPC, they build themselves as a distributed database. So this is some of the, probably some of the RPC logic, maybe the, the definitions of the RPC 
services and net, which should be networking stuff. So look at net. In net, we have things like signals and SQL. Let's see what SQL is doing in net. Uh, we have things like post handler. We have things like post handler, handle socket. So this is, I guess, like for handling uh, SQL network requests. So that's um, not the most coolest. For us, I'm going to try to see if I can find some information about the, the uh, closer to the metal. And then RPC, we have connection, failure, format, post context, and response. That's, I guess these are, and these are Rust files as opposed to being some IPC uh, language. So we are impulse responsing. And we have a thing, a thing for converting values into strings or vice versa. And uh, this is just kind of like converse, converting stuff and mapping into uh, maybe native types into RPC response. Here's the post contents, sorry, post context. I don't know what post means, maybe after context, maybe something about like comments and posts. And we have a B tree map, which should be some map that has a B tree as the underlying uh, construct. And we have this RPC context. Maybe post means post in the sense of the HTTP verb. I don't know. So this is, we have this authenticate. What is, see what authenticate is doing. Params needs one. You're going to, uh, serial DB IAM verify. So we have some IA, IAM. And let's see if we can find where that's defined. Uh, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Is source slash IAM. So this is this is going to be identity stuff. We have some policy stuff, and it seems like they're kind of like rolling this on their own. Uh, that's uh, stuff like I think uh, Postgres and, and MySQL also have their own authentication stuff. You can imagine if you were using RPC, using um, relying on the RPC layer to handle authentication and authorization, but it seems like that's not uh, what they're doing. And mem just has nothing. We've got this mod. Oh, well, I guess in the mod.rs file, you can have stuff and this stuff includes some um, allocator, including gem allocator and mem allocator. I don't know if gem alloc is a thing, gem alloc is an alligator in C. Okay. And then Mac has what? Basically nothing. Something about B tree map, some macro, I guess Mac is macro and we have some sort of macro for, uh, uh, putting stuff in a collection that looks like, and then in DBS, we have almost nothing. Okay. So we have some startup commands. Maybe this is for. I guess DBS is maybe the stuff for the service. This is possibly setting up the RPC service. I see some IP addresses and stuff in there. I think this is service related. CNF, I'm going to guess is config. Yeah. Okay. So this is command line stuff. We have a, this ASCII art. And how about we see if there's an optimizer. Optimized aggregate. Oh, here we go. Source slash SQL. Oh, I missed core. Okay. So let's go back and make sure that we take a look at core. Okay. All right, that's where the good stuff is. All right. And in here we have IAM, which we saw before IDG. I don't know what that is. IDX. I'm not sure. KVS is probably key value store. We'll look at IDX. We'll look at SQL. Sin. I don't know. VS could be all sorts of stuff. Error, I'm going to guess is error handling or error and error types, that sort of thing. And what do we have? So in SQL, we have things like statements, value, access, and things like arrays, blocks, conditionals, 
So this looks like it's modeling out the SQL. Uh, after we parse SQL, we give it some structure. So we have some ex expression, the ability to explain, filter, the geometry. I'm guessing maybe the geometry of um, like, like panel data, like, uh, um, what do people call it? Kind of like tensory data, multi-dimensional uh, matrices, that sort of thing. IDX has planner in trees and foot. Whatever foot is, I don't know, but this might be my favorite folder so far. We have a highlighter, postings scorer in terms and an analyzer. So I'm not sure how much of this is really worth looking into, but here's planner. It's got a checker, iterators, K and N, maybe K nearest neighbors, K and N priority list, which has some uh, mutex. I forget what arc is. I think we looked up arc before, but um, this is some priority list. Let's see if we can find out what K and N priority list is. I think it is K nearest neighbors. Let's see if we can do surreal DB. A nearest neighbors. Performs a K nearest data, uh, neighbors search to a specified number of records closest to a given data point, optionally using a defined distance metric. So this would use some distance metric. Maybe this is for um, having like a, a vector style DB of um, AI type data where you might have some maybe cosine, they have cosine distance. These look like different distances. So we have distance kind, yeah, there we go. Uh, Chebyshev distance, cosine distance, Euclidean, Hamming, Jacquard. These are different uh, distances. Many of them are discrete. Jacquard, Manhattan, Minkowski, Pearson. I'm not sure what Pearson is, maybe some Probabilistic distance. Pearson correlation coefficient. I guess you could just distance correlation is maybe what that is. And we have different distance types. So see where they use distance kind. But basically it's going to be like for something like KNN, you just pass in distance as a function. All of that stuff is definable with a distance function that satisfies some number of properties. I think these are not necessarily uh, distances that are in the true, true metrics that are like symmetric, et cetera. Although maybe it is. I forget how Chevy Chev distance is defined. Oh, I see, it's just L infinity. It's a metric defined on a real coordinate space where the distance between two points is the greatest of their differences along any coordinate dimension. Okay. And uh, so these might all be symmetric, actually. And we have these distance. Uh, I think I was going to do a search for where it's used. So we do some, some parser and we parse the tokens. I'm guessing one of the things that you can pass in when you do a query is you can tell it maybe what kind of distance you want to do there's some this there's some convert distance thing i guess to try to convert from one distance to another and it shows up in keywords maybe we'll look at parts convert distance okay so we're, i guess we're maybe like converting from one internal type to an external type or maybe just between two internal types but we're going to take distance kind chevy chevy chev for example, and um, I guess convert it to distance Chebyshev. And for Minkowski, we do extra work. We look at the next token value. That is equal to the, we set distance to that. And we, um, I guess, are populating or returning distance Minkowski of distance. I guess Minkowski is, is parameterized in some way. I don't know if it's the same as the Minkowski metric where you get to pick the number of signs. 
order p. So it's a, okay, so this is just, we're summing up the absolute value distance of each coordinate and then uh, to the pth power. So I guess this is parameterized by p. And uh, so that's, that's uh, one of the things they do. That's, that's pretty interesting. Um, let's see what else we see. So here's the analyzer mod. What else is an analyzer? Nothing. Also, what is IDX and what is foot? I don't think we found out what foot is. We have a scorer and offsets and BM25 scorer. I don't know what BM25 is. Okapi BM25 in information retrieval. Okapi BM25 is a ranking function used by search engines to estimate the relevance of documents to a given search query. Okay. So, so, okay. So I don't know, I still don't know what FT is, but this is some uh, score and you pass in a term frequency, the document count and the document length. This looks a little bit like um, TFIDF. We also have postings. What's a posting? A posting has indexes. So I guess IDX is index. And it, uh, posting has, an ind has index scores, multiple index scores, a state key, an index key database, or rather index key base, a B tree, which I'm, is, I'm going to guess is mainly, mainly where they store data, the, the real data, and then a B tree store. And they're both, um, parameterized by, by try keys. And then postings has, you can create a new one and you can get its uh, B tree store. You can update a posting, et cetera. I don't know if a posting is maybe like a document. I'm not sure, but we're just going to kind of just kind of look around because we don't, we're, you know, half an hour is not much. Here's, uh, this is more index stuff. Let's see what else we can find. Uh, error. Here's index trees. And here we have B. So like, I guess like every other database, B tree is the, the, um, probably the main underlying thing. We saw KNN. We have M tree. I'm not sure what an M tree is. Maybe it's generalization of a B tree. And we have just like indexes and search context, et cetera. All right, I don't know. I, I thought maybe the internet would tell me what an M tree is, but, uh, we, so we've seen some of this stuff, um, in, in other databases. Data space. And I think we saw some stuff that referenced planners. Here's the planner. So the query planner is going to take some options. Uh, opt options, I guess, with options and cond options. And it's got some hash map of executors, whether we require distinct, some fallbacks. I don't know what those are. Maybe those are like defaults, an iteration workflow and an iteration index. That's, I guess, pro like the constructor in Rust. I'm not sure you can add iterable, add iterables. These are maybe things that you're going to have to search through. And it takes maybe a stack. I don't know what SDK is, but also context, a table and some iterator stuff. And then we have next iteration stage, which is going to, we're going to call fetch add on the iteration index. I'm not sure what that does, but we're going to pass in the relaxed ordering and get some POS position. And we're going to match, we're going to uh, ask the iteration workflow to get, I guess the thing as the position casting it as a U size. And if we get some, uh, stage that says that we need to build K uh, nearest neighbors, then 
we're going to call this brute force k and n results. Um, otherwise, I guess if we don't get this k nearest neighbor thing, then we just return whatever is is, uh, or rather, we set is to to is cloned. I guess, or no, I guess this is matching whatever. Um, this is like the fall through case, I guess, of the matching thing. And we're just cloning whatever we get back, I suppose, from the iteration workflow thing. And that's really it. It seems like planning is kind of mainly focused on K nearest neighbors, or maybe just K nearest neighbors is sufficiently different that, uh, that it requires its, its own case that, that it stands out. Let's see if there's anything in plan. We have a plan builder. And that will, this will do things like, do we have an index? And we have a list of expressions that are not ranges, backed by an index that are not ranges. So these can't be ranges. And they are non-range things, I guess, that, that have indices. And we have, we keep a list of indexes involved in the plan. And then we group each possible optimization into a sub, uh, local to a subquery. So I guess we're mapping group ref, some reference to a group. We're mapping it. I guess we're mapping just references to, to the things they are, are referring to. I suppose the order matters because we want the plan to be consistent across repeated queries. And then you have this all in group things. Does a group contain only and relations? Um, so and relations are nice because uh, each and is a is an additional constraint, whereas every or is kind of like a branching path. So I guess um, what is this like conjunctive? This is like spiritually like conjunctive normal form. Is that a thing? Or did I just mis misspell it? A logical formula is considered to be in CNF if it is a conjunction of one or more disjunctions of one or more literals. So all of the following are in conjunction. So, okay, so you, um, you can have disjunctions, I guess, in the parentheses, parenthesized parts, but at the outer layer, I guess, of the like syntax tree, it's all um, conjunctions. And I think we saw something called CNF. I'm wondering if this is related to uh, conjunctive normal form. So that's why how many concurrent jobs can be buffered? Okay. I don't know. It might, it might be config. What if we search for normal form? We have normal. I'm not sure. So I guess this, uh, it doesn't seem like CNF is particularly related to this, uh, pattern. Right. I think we're probably close to half an hour. Let's just see where we are. Oh, we have eight minutes left. Okay. So with eight minutes left, let's, let's dig in. Let's try to find something, um, somewhat technical. So we were, we were at the plan builder, weren't we? Uh, so we also keep track of, uh, the, whether the whole query contains only, okay. So only in relations is it backed by an, is the, is every expression backed by an index and that's the. I guess the struct for plan builder and just based on what, uh, what data they have, we, I think we have a sense of like how they're going to try to build plans and, and how to optimize. Um, so what else do we want to see? What's going to make this different from something like Postgres? I'm not sure we have key and key value store. Key, key, key. 
we have table thing node. I guess we should see, we should be able to find some graphy stuff. And indeed here is graph. We should be able to find, if, I mean, we could possibly look for some of the like asset compliance transactions and, and whatnot. So surreal key KV that's, it shares some of the branding with the database. So maybe that's uh, important. So here's a, here's a transaction for surreal KV. Is the transaction complete? Is the transact, is the transaction writable? Should we check unhandled transactions, the underlying data store transaction? So that's stuff that, um, that's needed for the transaction. Here's, um, implement drop for transactions. So I guess when you call drop, maybe as the SQL function, uh, we'll check to see if we're all, if we're panicking, I guess we'll continue panicking and then we'll handle the behavior. And we'll call self, we'll match self check. And maybe this is like if a transaction is dropped. So uh, let's not look at that. That's, that's not so fun. And we have a data store, which opens a new database. Here's the impl tra implementation of transaction is closed. You can commit it. What happens when you commit? If the transaction is already closed, was read only return an error. Okay. So, uh, we, we can't do those on a closed or a read only transaction. You can, uh, but if you do successfully commit the transaction, we will mark the transaction as done and commit it by calling self .inner commit. What is inner inner is the inner under inner underlying transaction. So this is really just a wrapper around this, uh, TX type, which is defined in this file, right? Okay. At any rate, that's some key value store. I feel like I didn't get a sense of like, what is the, what is the underlying store? Abstract data store. I'm not sure. I also saw rocks DB, which is, I think based originally on level DB, but is some, uh, I think it's like Facebook's uh, improvement of rock of uh, level DB. And, uh, yeah, it's like, like a key value store type thing. Let's verify that this is true. A high performance embedded database for key value data it is a fork of Google's level DB optimized to exploit to exploit multi-core processes. You shouldn't exploit your processors. It's, it's a crime. Developer meta platforms was Facebook Inc. Okay. So it's, uh, meta wanted to fork level DB. And so that's a key value store. I think spiritually similar to uh, Berkeley DB, which we've seen in several places, including in the Satoshi Bitcoin code. So let's take a look at graph, which I opened up somewhere. Here's table. Do we care about table? F T F D. This is going to tell us something about what, so I X must be index L Q. I don't know. We'll go to graph a thing. I do kind of want to know what a thing is. A thing is, looks like it's basically a bunch of, uh, uh, bits, bits and the old bits and the old bytes. And then a graph is what? Well, we have more bits and bytes. I don't know what NS, DB, TB, and ID are. ID is maybe ID as an identifier. DB is maybe data, database. NS is maybe namespace. TB is maybe table. Uh, we can create a new one. We're doing kind of like the telegraphic speech version of variable naming. And, uh, whatever this prefix EG e is. And what can we do with it? We have FT suffix, but are not sure. How is this? How is this a graph? So public struct graph, uh, prime a 
I don't know what Prime is in in Rust, but uh, we're gonna have a, a namespace. Uh, the stuff we saw above, and really that's about it. And when we create a new one, we call graph new, passing in that stuff, and then also eg and fk. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what these are supposed to be. So this says it stores a graph edge pointer. So uh, I guess this should be, somehow we should see this as an edge. What are the two nodes? Maybe a node is a thing. Maybe a node is a, uh, a node should be some sort of document. Um, maybe a node is a node. Maybe LQ has something interesting to say. Stores the live select query definition on the cluster. So this, I don't know what live select is, maybe some sort of live data pattern. The LQ key is used to quickly discover which live queries belong to which nodes. This is used in networking, in networking for clustered environments, such as discovering if an event is remote or local, as well as garbage collection after dead nodes. So this node thing actually, well, it might be a node in the sense of a, um, a node in the distributed network, or it might be a node in the graph. And I'm not sure. I'm not really seeing anything that stands out as a, as a graph structure. Uh, let's see if we can do, let's look for traverse. Idiom start thing remote traversal. Uh, I don't know what idiom is. Here's some, uh, in fetch, we have some graph traversal expression thing. If you match part graph, then we'll let statement, uh, let SDMB select statement and of what? I guess we're going to pass in the, exp the expressions, the fields and the values, and the conditions. We're just going to clone the uh, conditions, I guess, that were passed in. And then we're going to call on, on the statement, I suppose. We're going to compute passing the stack. I'm guessing SDK is the stack, the context, the options. And we're going to await um, and then ask to get all the things, I guess, and then flatten them. But what's what's actually traversing? I don't know. Let's try traverse again. It seems like maybe the compute function is is hiding the, the implementation. We have the traversal in, in the tree. We have, it's mentioned in fetch, which we saw. It's, there's some mention of traversal in the B tree and whatever idiom is. How about, um, why don't we just search for graph? So SQL graph is maybe the place I want to be. Okay. So graph has a dir, maybe a directory, some fields, tables, uh, Conditions, I assume, split, group, order, limit, start, and alias. And you can get a string for it. There's some display, this is some display implementation. And I'm not sure. Should we look up idiom? We'll use algorithm. Algorithm should be fun. I don't know what these are, so let's see if we can find one of these algorithms. HS512. Um, is this a, just a, so EDDSA, this is like crypto algorithms. Is RS like RSA? Signing uh, JOTS. Yeah, I guess this is like crypto Java web, uh, web token stuff. Why? I don't know. We'll find out what idiom is and then we'll move on to another thing. Um, I don't know. Real DB idiom.
the uh the the documentation doesn't seem to <laughs> to tell us anything idioms in surreal db yeah i don't know i'm not sure surreal db i find this code a little bit uh rather pretty hard to uh to read the organization it seems like um some of the variable names and stuff seems like uh, i don't know if they're intentionally trying to obfuscate somewhat uh but it doesn't a lot of it doesn't really have um kind of the obvious structure and it's a little bit splayed out um that could be an advantage i guess it feels maybe a little bit like um like java java in style i wonder if some of the surreal db are originally java developers but we may never know uh, at any rate i'm going to move on <laughs>